my booktube. It's Christian of the Scorpio Reader. So today I will be doing a review on Wilder Girls by Roy Power. But first, to catch you up on my life recently, or like in terms of book stuff, I had the opportunity to go to BEA, which was phenomenal. I was only able to go up for the first day, but we took the train and it was a nice train ride. It's been a really long time since I've been on a train. Usually I just drive or fly wherever I need to go. I don't know what I was expecting it to be, but it blew whatever my expectations were out of the water. I was only able to go up for the first day, but it was, yeah, it was incredible. I got to hang out with or meet really cool publishing professionals. I got to interact with a lot of authors. It was just really cool. And then a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to go to ABA's or American Booksellers Association Children Institute in Pittsburgh because it was only four hours away from me. So that was really cool. It was an easy drive. Easy enough drive. It was a drive. I got to, again, interact with publishing professionals. I got to meet a lot of really cool booksellers. So I have a lot of arcs and my plan for them is to do reviews on all of them or all the ones I really like. I don't really want to do negative reviews on here. I like to pitch books. I like to tell people to read stuff and all that sort of thing. So I don't foresee myself doing many or if any negative reviews because that's no fun. Or for me, that's no fun. Some people like to do negative reviews. But I want to just do it about the books I really love. The book I'm going to review today is Wilder Girls by Rory Power and I love this book. I would say it's Lord of the Flies meets Annihilation the movie because I haven't read the book Annihilation. Anyways, um, Lord of the Flies is one of my most favorite books. So whenever I see a book that I can sort of, you know, like, see the similarities, you know, there I am. First off, the cover is really pretty. And once you read the book, it makes complete sense. So the review. So it's been 18 months since the Raxter School for Girls was quarantined. A disease hit the island school, killing most of the staff and leaving the girls to fend for themselves. The bodies of the girls who survived changed into something else. Some emerged with bruised bodies, second spines, or clawed hands. So you have this place where the girls are constantly told that there's a cure that's being worked on, that they just have to wait it out to not break the quarantine and go into the woods. As this disease feeds off of the island, as this disease takes over the island. So you have the main character, Hetty, and her friend goes missing, and she decides to do anything to bring her back, even if it means breaking the quarantine and leaving the zone and going into the horrors of the woods. So the writing was really pretty. It was so pretty to where it danced off of the page. So I have a few parts to read. And they're not spoilers, you don't have to worry about that. The first time I met her was the day I got to Raxter. I was 13, but not real 13. Not 13 with a chest and hips and bare teeth. I'd met Byant already on the ferry from the mainland to the island, and that had been fast and tight. She knew who she was and who I should be, and she fit into all the places in me I couldn't fill. And another passage I have to read is, it's the worst thing I've ever heard. Her voice sounds like metal on metal, like a million people all together, a scream and a whisper and everything in between, and it hurts. A real hurt reaching all the way to my bones, like they're cracking, like they're glass. I curl in on myself, press my hands to my ears. It feels like it lasts forever until finally the rattle is gone from my body and I can think again. So I really enjoyed this book, but I loved it. I thought it was beautifully written. I loved the characters. They were very harsh and sharp and fierce. So I finished it. It comes out July 9th. That's the conclusion. If you'd like to subscribe, feel free. Mm -hmm.